If you want to participate, contact me at ordinarywomenpodcast at gmail.com. I'm sure you have great projects to brag about. You can also follow me and message me on Instagram at ordinarywomenpodcast, on Twitter at ordinarywomenpc, or on Facebook on the page Ordinary Women. Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Ordinary Women. Uh, hi Disha, thank you so much for being here today. Hi Lucy, I'm really happy to be here. Really excited to have you and have a chat with you today. Uh, can you start by giving us a quick introduction of yourself, please? Sure. Um, my name is Disha. I'm currently living in Toronto. I am an energy engineer by profession. And uh, I'm, let's say I'm about 30 years old rather than give my actual age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I'm looking forward to the chat we're going to have. Cool. Uh, can you tell us something unusual about you? Something unusual about me? Um, I really like um, motorbikes. So I like riding them. I haven't bought one just yet, but that is a uh, future plan. Fun. When did you start to ride? When I was in university, actually. So first few years of university, I was really interested in um, learning to ride a bike. I actually had plans of going into a field where I got to build bikes, but um, that didn't happen. But something else caught my eye instead. So here we are. But that's where the interest started when I was studying mechanical engineering. Oh, that's super cool. Well, excited for you to have your first motorbike, hopefully anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, since here we talk a lot about uh, being a woman, I like to start by asking, um, was there a moment or an event that made you realize that you are a woman? Um, for the longest time, I didn't. Um, there were general interests um, that are experiences and typical to women, for sure. Um, the professional parts, the personal um, projects that I've gone after. Um, I never thought of myself as being a woman in a man's world, sort of. Um, but it's this is a little bit dark, but a lot of women, I think, really realize they are a woman and distinct when they face some sort of discrimination or harassment on the basis of gender. So there have been a few events, um, be it at work or in personal life, where that has happened. And those were actually the times when I realized most when I was a woman. But I never saw being a woman as a limiting factor in any way. Yeah, unfortunately, that's um, an answer that comes back quite often. Um, yeah. yeah, I hate it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you live with that? Um, so this act, I would like to refer to a little bit a scene in um, the TV show Brooklyn Nine Nine, and um, Peralta is talking to Amy, and um, uh, they're talking about casual sexism. And she gives a list of instances where she's been not taken seriously or just been brushed aside because she's a woman and often by men and how often it happens. And he feels super bad and he goes, oh, no, I feel th that feels terrible that I didn't even notice it. And she says, I know it's OK. I'm used to it. And he goes, that's even worse. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, I remember that episode. It really Yeah. I thought it was very powerful the way it was made and so relatable because I felt that everyone like we all have tons of these stories. Yeah. And it's always like, oh yeah, well, like we're so used to it. It's so awful. Exactly. And that that was sort of the moment I was like, oh, that was very well articulated. And I didn't realize I've internalized so much of this discrimination as something that happens every day. <laughs> Completely. And it's just when you start to learn about it that you realize, oh, wait, that was actually not normal. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and did you grow up with any feminine role model? Uh, I would actually say I grew up with a lot of female role models. A lot of them came from within my family. My mom was definitely the is the first person on the list there. Um, a lot of the things I am today definitely came from me, uh, came from my mom guiding me through life and building that confidence in me. Uh, my grandmother was a role model. She uh, defied a lot of norms that women in her age, and she was in a rural area in India, so there was a lot more stigma around a lot of the things that she did, but she was so forward thinking and um, she was an absolute advocate for all the women in the family to be um, educated as much as the men, to go to work, um, have independence and stand on their own two feet, which was very unlike her generation and also um, the geography that she lived most of her life in. Um, but she was really progressive that way. And there are a lot more other women who are either friends or family, um, relatives, people I've met in the workplace who I definitely look up to and there are things that I've um, learned from them uh, and have imbibed in my life now. That sounds amazing. That sounds like you're, uh, yeah, surrounded by uh, many great people. What do you think your mom and your grandma taught you? Uh, my mom taught me that you can... You can expect a lot of things from other people, but at the end of the day, the only uh, person you have control over is yourself. So either change um, or adapt, find a way to react to situations in a way that fits you, or um, you know, find people who actually are at the same wavelength as you. So that was one of the things that my mom definitely taught me. And my grandmother taught me, uh, not explicitly so, but just by the way she lived her life, was to never say no to a new experience. She was a sari-wearing, all her life sari-wearing woman who came from very traditional family uh, and going to the u.s in itself was like a big thing for her uh, because my uncle lived in the u.s and at the age of 70 or 60 i think she actually had her first pizza and she wore jeans which was again completely defi defying everything that a woman in her demographic would experience so just saying yes to any new adventure that comes my way would be one of the lessons I learned from my grandmother. That's very cool. What's the the latest one you said you yes to? Like uh, this is actually one of those experiences. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, very happy. I'm very happy that um, you said yes to this. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about saying yes to this too. <laughs> <laughs> nice um and what about your current role models do you currently have any female role models i would still say my mom is definitely my role model um even today specific in the business world i look up to a few different women like cheryl sandberg or indra nui they made quite a lot of uh, strides in business and broke a lot of glass ceilings for women for sure but these are role models from afar <laughs> not someone i actually know yeah those those would be the ones that, that i would say cool and what do you think they teach you resilience um just keeping focus on what you want to achieve and going for it not thinking anything else, having that tunnel vision to achieve that focus and crafting your life according to your focus, what do you, what your end goal and your targets. Cool. Very nice thoughts. 
And do you think that the lack of representation of women in society had an impact on you? Um, it, it's so it, it's almost like a callback to what we were discussing earlier, right? It's uh, we don't really realize what we're lacking until we see something that brings it into focus. And um, lack of representation of women in society, I didn't realize if it made a difference um, in my life or not until I actually saw representation of women in society in either the paths that I wanted to take or choices that I wanted to make. And it's sort of one of those things where you keep going on with life, like without thinking of representation or what do I need until you need it. Um, so I'm currently in a uh, place in my life where I'm looking for mentorship in my career, for example, and I am um, looking, I'm craving connection to other women who have either gone down the paths that I want to chase, so have like different uh, diverse interests, and I want to talk to people who have uh, diverse interests and get their thoughts on how they did it. And um, I do see that it's a lot of people in the space, um, but finding that right mix of representation is definitely, it's definitely something to sift through a lot of different things to get to what fits for me. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, if anyone who's listening think they could be a mentor to Disha, please reach out. <laughs> um, what you were just saying about the fact that you don't know until you realize or missing is so true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel that I've learned that almost like quite late rather than, yeah. I mean, yeah, of course you don't realize that you're liking that, but yeah. Absolutely. Including, um, so I'm an Indian woman and when I was watching the recent season of Bridgerton and I saw um, the representation there, I was like, oh, this makes a lot of difference. <laughs> yeah, I guess as a, as a white woman, I'm represented like, I, like I'm among the most represented women. Right. Uh, but I'm glad that things are finally changing yeah <laughs> <laughs> i saw quite a few discussions about that and about the fact that i think quite a lot of people were mentioning that usually they tend to take uh, indian women with quite light skin and that here it wasn't necessarily the case mm -hmm. slowly too slowly but at least they're doing something <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely change but there's definitely still a lot more work to do yeah completely oh well i mean no not oh well like it is and it's not okay <laughs> moving on to hopefully more like funnier <laughs> stories um i'd like to hear about like a, a project or achievement or, or life experience or something that you did and that you're very proud of um so yeah what do you want to talk about <laughs> um there are a lot of little light life experiences that have taught me quite a lot and lessons that I still use to this day. But one of the achievements that stand out for me quite a bit is um, when I completed my 10th grade, I also completed um, my Arangetram, which is, it's almost a professional level training in classical dance, Indian classical dance. And at the end of it, um, you have almost like a four or five hour um, show where a lot of people attend and you're the solo performer. Um, so that achievement in itself was pretty big. Um, but the fact that I, it's, a, it's usually 10 years course. Uh, I did it in almost three years. So the shortened timeline is the icing on the cake for that achievement. That's amazing. <laughs> Wait, 10 years and you did it in three? Uh, you must be like, have a gift or something. <laughs> so I did uh, learn dance on and off, um, but 
the way Indian classical dance stru is structured that every time you move and change a teacher, you just start from scratch all over again. So, oh wow, maybe I cheated a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's still like absolutely incredible. So when did you start to dance? At a pretty young age. My mom always wanted to be a dancer um, and she, for lack of opportunities and circumstances, she couldn't pursue it. And uh, my mom was definitely an advocate to give me as many opportunities as I could possibly get. Uh, get me involved in absolutely anything that she could um, get me access to. And um, I showed an interest in dance and that um, blossomed. And it also, I'm sure it factored in that she always wanted to, to learn dance herself, factored in as well. And um, there was a lot of encouragement there. So I started almost at the age of five, I think. Oh, wow. So young. That's so cool. Do you still dance today? I wish I did. I wish I pursued it more. Uh, it is an underlying thought in my head that I want to get back into it again. Um, but some pieces need to come together to get back into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. And so how long do you have to prepare for this particular diploma? So, um, different teachers have different um, ways of coaching students. Um, my teacher had, her way was three months before the date of the performance. Um, just from morning to evening, you're in the dance class, practicing, just constantly practicing, learning, improving the steps, the expressions. Um, the posture, all of it. So it ended up almost being like a 10, 12 hour training day every day for three months. Oh, wow. <laughs> so is it like during school holidays or do you skip school to do this? So I had just graduated from 10th grade and I had um, a little bit of summer vacation. So most of my summer vacation went in training for um, the performance. And I had about a month of school where I was attending school and just waking up, going to school, right after school, go back to the class and train, train, train. Oh, wow. That sounds intense. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely was, and uh, there are so many life lessons that I took from it that I am extremely glad that um, both my teacher really uplifted me into pursuing it, and my mom uh, really pushed for making that happen. That's so cool, yeah. What kind of things have you learned? Um, after a performance like that, I think... Um, it takes away the fear from presentation or any sort of... Um, it gives you a lot of quick thinking in any situation uh, because you're performing on stage, a lot of people are looking at you and you're the only one on stage. So if you mess up, how do you pivot and um, keep the show going, uh, as the saying goes. So I, I've taken that lesson into my professional life, my personal life. Um, Anything that I do, it's it's constantly like, oh, if I'm posed with a challenge, what will I do? And just the, the quick-footedness that comes with it to pivot at any moment is one of the lessons that that has stuck with me most, um, most prominently. That's super cool. Thank you. Wow, that's so impressive, honestly. <laughs> was it like a ballet or something? Like, was it, uh, what did you dance to? Uh, it was, uh, the dance form is called Bharatnatyam. It is an Indian classical dance. So kind of like ballet, but if it was an Indian version of ballet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Indian equivalent of ballet is what I would say it is. Okay, cool. Do you still remember it? I do. I always keep thinking that, okay, it's been years since I practiced or performed, so I wouldn't remember it. And it's almost like... I think the three months really put the muscle training in. And <laughs> <laughs> you will probably never, ever forget it. <laughs> and was there anyone who had an important impact on it? 100% my mom. Um, my mom was very much... Her plan was always like, 
this is an achievement that sort of sets you up for a lot of different things. And my mom always had it in her mind that um, she wanted me to complete at least one of the other activities that I picked up outside of education, like formal education. So she was a very big driving force. And once I joined the teacher who did actually, um, I ended up doing, completing my course with, um, the teacher was a very big influence as well because she, <laughs> she right off the bat was very confident and she was like, no, she can pick it up quickly. Just the, let her finish the diploma. Once you reach that stage, you have a lot more flexibility in who you learn with, what stage you start learning with again, or how you perform, who you can perform with, can you join dance troops or not. So she was um, also very much like, both my mom and my teacher were very much like, you've come so far, you better finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think you were able you were going to be able to to achieve it? Uh, the the thought actually never crossed my mind. I saw I was sort of thrown into it and I went with it. <laughs> <laughs> Not even thinking, just doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like being pushed into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> you just swim. <laughs> and what's the challenges that you faced? Um, I was pretty young, so. Challenges specifically during the diploma or the performance weren't there as much because my parents, my teacher, my um, fellow students, my relatives, friends, they all took a lot of the obstacles away. They helped quite a lot. Actually, a lot of credit goes to all of them. Um, challenges in pursuing dance afterwards definitely came about quite a bit. Um, I moved around quite a lot, so I moved from uh, India to Middle East to the U.S., um, back to Middle East, and now Canada. And um, so, just being able to pick dance up again as a vocation um, has definitely been challenging. You do sort of establish the right people and then you do convince them that, hey, you know, I can actually do this and uh, <laughs> uh, join either troops for performing or start a dance institute of your own. So there were challenges after the fact, um, not so much during the course or the diploma itself. Okay, cool. And was there anything that was uh, easier than you thought? Uh, the, it was the learning. So I still had about three years worth of learning um, the choreo choreography left. And uh, I thought, oh, that's going to take me a long time. Um, but my dance teacher was like, no, you had to do it within this week. <laughs> she, did. <laughs> she didn't hold me to it. <laughs> But she did bring me up to speed within two to three weeks with the rest of the choreography for the uh, uh, years in like two, two three weeks. Um, and that was, the foundation was easier than I thought it would be. And uh, all the work after that was more around perfecting the choreography, the posture, the steps, the expressions, all of that. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, did you think... Did you ever think about um, becoming a professional dancer? Uh, that was a very interesting career path, definitely. Um, it crossed my mind. It didn't become a serious thought. My interest was very much grounded in um, engineering and solving um, societal problems, environmental problems. Dance just happened to be something that gave me joy, but I didn't really want to pursue it professionally. Okay, cool. Um, and why are you proud of it? Why am I proud of it? Um, that's actually a good question. So, this is one of the positive things that you don't realize is a positive thing when you're in the middle of it, but when you stand back out and you're like, oh, that was great. Um, <laughs> so this was definitely one of those events. Um, for the three months, 
it was I was just in it completely practicing um, focused all of that I didn't realize how big an achievement it would be until years from the event even today I I think back and go oh I just there are so many things that I carry over from the event and um, even on the day off my relatives my friends so many people were in the audience um, and the reaction at the end of the event it was just I had I had uncles with tears in their eyes and I was like oh I had no idea I could have this much impact on people <laughs> so that was definitely um, something that I was proud of and I didn't realize it until much later actually uh, that's amazing yeah and just like yeah achieving it is already yeah that, that must have been so much work and yeah it's amazing <laughs> thank you <laughs> I think I'm done with my questions. Is there anything that we haven't mentioned during our conversation and that you wanted to to talk about or to mention? So I really wanted to thank you for this opportunity. I think the format that you have and the podcast in itself is fantastic. And um, it sort of pushes people into getting out of their comfort zone, but doing so in a very comfortable and secure environment so thank you for that and um, one of the things that so we spoke about a few different things um, related to women in this episode and something that I'm trying to make myself focus on it so I haven't perfected this in any, in any way but uh, definitely making some forward movements here is to take life as it comes. Um, a lot of times I found myself getting stuck in situations or I forget um, some of the things that I've achieved in my life, which is not to say in comparison to anybody else, but those achievements are still mine and we forget how great we all are. We're all ordinary, but extraordinary in some, some other ways. So um, I think that's something that most women need to keep remembering that they need, they've done quite a lot <laughs> and we all need to take a moment to recognize that. So I think this, this podcast is a great platform to sort of revisit that and um, talk that out with you, Lucy. <laughs> Yeah, oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. And yeah, thank you so much for for coming here, participating, uh, sharing, um, sharing your story with uh, me and everyone who's listening. So important. And yeah, it was so interesting. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Lucy. I absolutely had a, a blast being um, a part of this. Thank you. Ah, uh, thanks. Me too. And as usual in this podcast, the guest has the very last word. So the mic is yours. We all have it in us to achieve whatever we want to. That would be my last word. 